This problem, which has to do with a sledder going down a hill and up another hill, is one of those ones that is basically taking the world and figuring out how to describe it in physics terms. Now, the sledder goes down the hill, loses gravitational potential energy, comes up here, and is clearly going to slow down. That's a question of conservation of energy. So we're going to treat this as a conservation of energy problem. But there's additional information in the problem. First off, the hill is frictionless. Also, there's nobody pushing the sledders. No one's giving the sledder a shove. So this is an isolated system. It's frictionless. Frictionless tells us there's no change in thermal energy. There's no frictional forces. No work is done. Okay, so if no work is done, this is an isolated system. There's also no springs anywhere. So we don't have to worry about elastic potential energy. And so therefore, our basic relationship for the conservation of energy just turns into this. The initial kinetic energy plus the final gravita initial gravitational potential energy is equal to the final kinetic energy plus the final gravitational potential energy. And so it's a conservation of energy problem, and we can turn it. We can take our basic statement of the conservation of energy and turn it into this relationship right here. Now, in our preparation step, we'll refine this a little bit further. Okay, so let's do our preparation step. In the prepare step, what we want to do is take this basic relationship and see what the different terms corresponds to. Okay? Now, we're going to start with this. We're going to think about potential energy. One of the basic things we have to figure out in setting up a problem like this is what to take as the zero for a potential energy. You're given a zero line right here. We could use this, but in fact, we don't have to. I'm going to take the zero line to be right here. I'm going to take it to be the starting point of this letter. And so this letter ends up 1.7 meters higher than where he or she started. So this letter ends up here at a greater height. And I don't care that this letter went through a dip. This letter goes down and then goes up. I don't care because there's an initial state and there's a final state. And I just care about the difference between here and here. So I'll take this to be my zero. That also saves us from worrying about what is the height of the dip and when I've seen people solve this problem, they get hung up on saying, oh, we don't know the depth of the dip. And the reason we don't need to know the depth of the dip is we only care about the initial state and the final state. Now, we can say some other things. Since we're taking this as our zero of potential energy, the initial gravitational potential energy is equal to zero. We're also told that the sledder just makes it over the next hill. What that means is the velocity is really, really tiny here. And let's take it to be as close to zero as we want. What that tells us is the final kinetic energy is equal to zero. And we're justified to make that approximation. So it's an isolated system. There's no friction. The initial potential energy we can take is zero. The final kinetic energy we can take is zero. And so our net result is that our basic conservation of energy relationship just turns into this. The initial kinetic energy is equal to the final gravitational potential energy. How fast does the person have to be moving? Fast enough to be able to gain the potential energy corresponding to 1.7 meter rise in height. That's all we need to do. So our solution is actually quite straightforward. We just have to write down an expression for the initial kinetic energy, 1 fm times vi squared, and set that equal to our final potential energy. But that's just m times g times the change in height, which is 1.7 meters. So we have a relationship. Oh, something else happens here, too. Notice this. In this equation, I've got an m on this side. I have an m on this side. They cancel. So the mass doesn't matter. That's a good thing, because we weren't given the mass in the problem statement. Well, now we can just solve and say this. The initial velocity just has to be equal to the square root of 2 times g times 1.7 meters. And if we solve for that, we end up with a speed of 5.8 meters per second to two significant figures. Let's do some assessment. 5.8 meters per second, that's probably about 
13 miles per hour. That's a reasonable speed for like kids going on sledding hills. Okay, you get up to a pretty good clip, but not fast enough that if you fell off your sled, you're going to damage yourself. Goes down a hill, gets going quite pretty fast down here, makes it to the top of the hill. That seems reasonable. I'll also note this. It's basically the same question as to how fast would you have to leave the ground to jump this high? And we've seen some problems like that. And this is a, a value comparable to what we saw previously. So our assessment is this. The numbers seem reasonable in terms of what we know about sledding, but also reasonable in terms of what we know about jumping. And basically, it's a kinetic energy to potential energy problem, which is exactly the same as you would see with jumping. So our net result is that our answer makes sense in terms of our understanding of the way the world works.